In one of the most recent press releases, NASA and ESA released a study and a few images in regards to one of the strangest planets out there in terms of orbits. A planet orbiting two stars in the way you see right here, perpendicularly. You can read a little bit more about this in one of the links in the description. And though by itself this type of an orbit and this discovery are obviously just a little bit unusual, they are not impossible. As a matter of fact, similar circumbinary planets with even similar polar orbits have technically been discussed before and they can easily be explained using modern physics. But today we're going to discuss a slightly different discovery that actually started as a mystery over two decades ago. And that particular planet is extremely difficult to explain, although once again, not the planet itself, just its orbit. Today we're going to discuss a star system known as New Octanis, a system that officially became somewhat intriguing sometimes between the late 90s and some of the first investigations in 2004. But ever since the original observations, there's actually been a bit of a mystery because a lot of things here just did not make sense. As in, if there was a planet, it made no sense how it was able to orbit around a star. And so in this video let's discuss some of these new discoveries and the most recent paper finally confirming the existence of this bizarre planet and of course discuss why this should not exist and how this is currently being explained. But first, a little bit more about the star and what researchers detected here many years ago. And this was a study by David Ram, an optometrist who back in 2004 finally completed his PhD in astronomy. And so basically, just like so many of us, he switched his career after many, many years. And almost right away, he discovered a very bizarre mystery around the star. A very subtle form of some kind of a stellar variability that potentially suggested a planet. But the thing is, this was already known to be a closed binary. And so here we have two separate stars. A brighter K-type star, approximately 1.6 masses of the Sun, but about 5 times as large orbiting around a much smaller star that seems to be a white dwarf, 0.6 masses of the Sun, and orbiting at a distance of about 2.6 astronomical units. And so here a single orbit takes almost 3 years, which by itself is obviously not unusual. But as researchers observed this star more and more, they started to detect somewhat subtle variability as if something else was in orbit, basically right between these two stars. But in this case, orbiting one of the stars, but much farther away than expected. And here this was discovered by using the method known as radial velocity, essentially observing the redshift and blue shift and trying to find various periodicities suggesting something is in orbit. But because this was so subtle and because this was using much older telescopes, and also because this orbit would be very unusual, as in it would be unstable, simply because it's right between these two stars, one of the first propositions for this bizarre Doppler effect was basically some kind of a stellar activity. Or maybe these periodic variations were just the result of some kind of a flare or some other magnetic effects coming from the larger star. And that's because this type of an orbital arrangement would just be completely impossible for longer than just a few years. If this planet was really orbiting between two stars, it would have already been kicked out a long time ago. But over the last 20 years, through continuing this research, and by using additional telescopes such as TESS and even Gaia, scientists discovered even more and more evidence for the existence of this unusual planet. Or at least for the existence of something gravitational tugging at one of the stars and producing these transient variations. And so here most researchers focused on one of two potential explanations. Either some kind of a new unknown phenomenon when it comes to stellar activity and stellar variability, which basically masqueraded as a planet and if so, this was a huge discovery because it meant that many other planets are maybe also not real, or maybe this was a planet, but if so, orbiting in some really strange way and for reasons still unexplained. And almost right away, the first explanation was that this arrangement seems to work if this planet is orbiting in the opposite direction, if this is basically a retrograde orbit. It would look something like this. And so it turns out that if it is orbiting in the opposite direction, suddenly things become a bit more stable and suddenly this planet seems to be possible after all. And so with additional observations using various other telescopes, including Hipparchos and Rosette, researchers found more and more clues that there seems to be a planet after all and the only explanation is that it's orbiting in the opposite direction. But despite the fact that these new studies explained how this planet was able to maintain its orbit, they didn't actually explain why it exists and how it was created. In other words, here, the idea behind the planetary formation 
did not make sense. Mostly because when planets are formed, they're supposed to be formed orbiting in the same direction as the rest of the star system, just because they're formed from the protoplanetary disk. And well, this mystery has been bugging researchers for essentially 20 years. For many years there have been different propositions and different explanations, but time and time again something was discovered that just did not make sense. And so this very strange star, 70 light years away from planet Earth, was creating a major problem for astronomy when it comes to orbital mechanics. But I guess the first question to ask here is, ok well how unlikely is this retrograde orbit? And do we actually have anything similar in the solar system, at least when it comes to for example moons or smaller objects? And the answer is yes. Here in the solar system we do have quite a few asteroids, including the one you see right here, that seem to orbit in the opposite direction. As of 2025, approximately 100 such asteroids are known to us. You can find the list for some of them in the description below. And usually this is a result of interaction with planets like Jupiter that change the orbit of the asteroid so much that it eventually becomes retrograde. Intriguingly in comparison, there are over 2000 different comets known to have similar orbits as well. As a matter of fact, it's believed that some of these asteroids might have been comets in the past. But a much better example is the moon Triton, the moon orbiting Neptune. Here this is the only known moon to us that also orbits in the opposite direction, and today this is explained as this moon actually not being the moon to begin with. It very likely was a dwarf planet captured by Neptune billions of years ago, and at some point it's going to crash into Neptune because of tidal interactions. I think there are some older videos on the channel somewhere in the description discussing this a little bit more. And so maybe this planet experienced something similar to Triton. Maybe it was somehow captured in the current orbit from somewhere outside. Or to be more specific, it's extremely likely to have been captured from a much wider orbit when it might have been orbiting two stars instead of one. Here for this capture to occur, the planet would have to change its orbit for many many years, going through a kind of a figure 8 pathway around both stars until it finally assumes this orbit. In other words, this explanation was maybe just a little bit complicated as well. And so this orbit hopping explanation was also not widely accepted. But because of some of the recent discoveries from other star systems, scientists potentially started to discover certain clues. For example, systems like this, WASP-17b, turn out to also have planets orbiting in a somewhat retrograde fashion, and planets that were potentially formed from some kind of a primordial disk back in the days. There were at least two such planets discovered in the last 10 years, but much more importantly, researchers also discovered a protostar or a baby star that contained an accretion disk where some parts were actually orbiting in the opposite direction, implying that the formation of planets orbiting in the opposite direction might happen in certain disks. And so this counter-rotating accretion disk actually became one of the best explanations. But the question is, where did the disk even come from? Well, it could not have been there from the start. It had to be a disk that formed afterwards when one of these stars became a white dwarf. And so here we actually have one of the biggest hints. The way this planet orbits, right between these two stars, is actually in the region where both stars very likely orbited around one another before the second star became a white dwarf. In other words, before the smaller star evolved into a white dwarf, and when it was still much larger, it was very likely orbiting much closer. Which means that the current location for the planet would have been impossible, and that also implies that the planet very likely did not exist. But based on many observations from various white dwarfs, we also know that quite a few of them eventually form their own disks. Disks that sometime seem to produce second generation planets. With quite a few of these planets discovered in the past, and quite a few of them discussed in the last few years. Actually one of the recent discoveries even suggests one of these planets could have been inside the habitable zone sometimes in the past. Which is essentially the final resolution to this two decade old mystery that was recently explored and published in the study you see right here. And so after two decades and lots and lots of observations, over 1500 to be exact, researchers seem to have finally explained what must have happened here. And so first of all, this planet is definitely real and was recently confirmed by the European Southern Observatory Telescope, and this planet seems to have either come from the outside, much farther away from both stars where it orbited before, or more likely, was formed from the leftovers left behind by the white dwarf from that second generation disk that seems to form around many white dwarf systems. Which still makes this a very unusual and very bizarre system, but also a pretty exciting system because, technically, the way this planet orbits 
Depending on the type of a planet this is, it might have some really unique conditions on the surface, especially because it once in a while approaches the bigger star where things become relatively warm. But since it's most likely some kind of a gas giant based on its mass, and since we know very little about it based on these limited observations, it will probably take a lot more observations and a lot more analysis to really find out what's going on on the surface and to find out what kind of a planet this is. Right now its mass is estimated at 2.4 Jupiter masses, so it's extremely likely to be a hot gas giant. But we'll definitely come back and discuss this more if there are some additional discoveries and additional explanations. Until then, well I guess it's great to know that this unusual ancient mystery is finally solved and this bizarre orbit has potentially been finally explained. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can actually find quite a few additional videos and no ads, maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership that contains some other videos, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.